my beautiful, intellectually curious, and super extra dapper today, love bugs, welcome back to my channel. You are looking mighty fine, mighty beautiful, extra dapper today, but that's all about to change because we are going to react videos and you're going to pull your hair out, you're going to cry your makeup off, and we are going to debunk some more bug BS. This is from The Bright Side. If you touch this beetle, you will regret it instantly. And I picked this one because one, they're like, don't touch this beetle and it's on someone's hand. But also this beetle is not dangerous. It has big mandibles that it can bite you with, but I have a picture of one on my face. So. Harlequin beetle looks formidable and it is. Despite the looks, Harlequin beetles aren't really dangerous. They Use the thumbnail and are like, oh my god, don't touch this beetle. Literally 25 seconds in, they're like, well, actually, they're fine. Why would you do this? Why? They won't bite you even if you corner them. And if you, by any chance, grow cabbage in your backyard, you probably would try to corner them. These bugs feed on its leaves. Still, uh, better. No, <laughs> no, they don't. Harlequin beetles are longhorn beetles. Uh, we assume they eat sap and nectar. Females will chew through wood and will like deposit their eggs, like old kind of dead rotting wood. Um, so I think they're confusing this maybe with the Harlequin bug. Okay, so the Harlequin bug is not the Harlequin beetle. The Harlequin bug is an insect pest on cabbage and in the United States, and the Harlequin beetle is from South America, Central and South America. So um, no, Harlequin bugs are in the order Hemiptera. They have a beak, they can suck plant sap. Harlequin beetles have the chewy chompy chomp mouth parts and they are nomming through logs and stuff to lay their eggs. They are not eating cabbage. Someone photoshopped this. Someone photoshopped it. Um, don't eat, all right, cool. All right, so Harlequin bugs are not har Harlequin beetles and they eat different things. End of story. This is going to be a long video. Well, better not to touch them with your bare hands. They exude a foul smelling liquid that both stinks and stink. No, they don't. Okay, so again, because these researchers, if you could even call them that, mistook Harlequin beetles and Harlequin bugs. Harlequin beetles cannot produce any stinky stink. They can make a noise if you pet them. They go, <coughs> there's a video here for your enjoyment. So they can go, <coughs> but they can't lance, like launch any chemicals. That again would be the Harlequin bug because it's in the group of the stink bugs. The stink bugs can produce stinky chemicals. They can produce chemicals that will irritate your mucous membranes, your eyes and your nose and all that stuff. So that is true for the Harlequin bug, not the Harlequin beetle. Oh my you know what also stinks? This video? Now, besides my socks, squash bugs. Good. Squash bugs which are in the family Korea day. They're, they have two bad common names. The first one is squash bugs. Not all of them in the family Korea day eat squash. And the other is leaf footed bug. And not all of them have leaf extensions on their feet. So it's just kind of like a bad common name all around. They're in the family Korea day. They are either called squash bugs or leaf footed bugs. However, this that they are showing a picture of is neither is <laughs> none of those. This is a stink bug. This is in the family Pentatomidae, very similar to the Harlequin bug that we were just talking about that is actually a pest on cabbage. You can make a stinky stink that's in the same, uh, it's in the same family as it. So what is on screen, not a squash bug, it is a stink bug. Oh my, this, <laughs> we might need to break this one into two parts. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing a full long react video because like normally these react videos are like an hour and 20 minutes of me being like oh my god there's so much wrong 10 minutes there is so much wrong so let me know if you would be interested in seeing like an extended version of a react video because i am squash bugs are no, also often bugs. mistaken for stink bugs okay but those are even okay so this oh my god really you get it right here this is a stink bug so they got it right here but literally 20 seconds earlier, they didn't. It's the same insect with three different labels. Oh my God. 
Why does this have 300,000 views? Why don't my videos get 300,000 views? <laughs> Help a girl out. You shouldn't eat monarch butterflies or their caterpillars. The yeah, definitely not. Why would you? <laughs> there are plenty of insects you can eat. Uh, toxic butterflies are not on that list. They're highly poisonous. I Monarchs feed on milkweed, a plant containing... Pretty sure. I mean, we're wrong. But. Being a potent toxin, they've acquired immunity to it, and as a side effect, butterflies accumulate the toxin in their bodies. This makes them a very unappetizing dish for birds and other predators. So, yes, they have what is called a cardiac glycoside, and the cardiac glycoside will induce vomiting. You're not gonna like die or anything. You're just not gonna be. You're just gonna be sick for a little bit. Don't eat them? That's my advice. Don't eat brightly colored insects that you don't know what they are. Also, don't eat wild insects in general. Like, that's a thing. Don't eat wild insects. <laughs> insects that you can eat, you can get in restaurants, you can get like packaged as flour. They have gone through the process. So yeah, don't just like pick up random bugs that you find in the forest and eat them. Like, why do I even have to say this? Tiger beetles come in lots of shapes and colors, but they all have oh, two traits in common. Whoa, 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 whoa. That, that, my friend, that is not a tiger beetle. This isn't even in the same suborder, <laughs> let alone like the same family or anything. This, so, tiger beetles are ground beetles and they're in their own distinct group and this which is on screen is a type of longhorn beetle which is in the group Cerambicid that this this longhorn beetle is actually more closely related to the harlequin beetle at the beginning of the video than the tiger beetle that they're comparing it to right now long thin legs oh, wait, and no, no, sharp no, 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 sword like no, 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 no. that one also this one is a really beautiful longhorn another longhorn beetle so they're showing two longhorn beetles when they should be showing tiger beetles which are completely different this is in the genus salidonathus and is also a type of uh, longhorn beetle those legs okay. allow them to run faster than almost any other insect this one is a tiger beetle that they're showing that one yes is a tiger beetle so that fast, when, in fact, this that is, when they're- This is the Sally Donathus. You can tell, like, one, tiger beetles run, as this video is saying. And so these longhorn beetles do not have legs designed for running. They have legs that are designed for, like, crawling up trees and, like, walking very slowly. Also, as their name suggests, they have really long antennae. Longhorn beetles is referring to the long antennae. Also, if I were to ever open up, like, a bug eating restaurant, I would clearly call it the longhorn beetle. <laughs> It's like longhorn steak, but whatever. Anyway. We're on a hunt, they that sometimes one, yes. have to stop that and look is. around for a few seconds. Their eyes and brain simply can't process the picture quickly enough. So they wait for the landscape to load around them. Most that tiger is. beetles are harmless, but if you see one with an orange pattern on its back, don't touch it. These bugs produce cyanide to protect themselves. And this chemical can do a lot of harm, both to animals and people. Yes, cyanide is highly toxic to like basically everything, actually, because it, it blocks the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell. However, the amount of cyanide that this tiger beetle can produce is not enough to actually hurt you. The insect that has, or the arthropod that has the most amount of cyanide is a millipede, and that millipede is one one hundredth of a lethal dose to humans. So you're gonna be fine. Also, good luck catching tiger beetles. They're really fast and they are really hard to catch. Also, that study that they were referencing which somehow they managed to pull out the scientific study, which is amazing, but they can't like identify their insects properly, which is mind boggling. But yes, that study is correct. The tiger beetles run so fast that their brain cannot process the information around them. So they literally run, stop, like reorient themselves and then run again. So it's, <laughs> it's a really cool and interesting study and I will link it in the reference section below. By the way, welcome back to my channel. Hello, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Nancy. I am an entomologist, which means that I study bugs. I live in Ecuador, where normally I'd be toting you around the jungles of Ecuador, but we live in the times of the pandemic. So I'm here 
reacting to some bug stuff instead. If you like this video, be sure to like it and subscribe, share with your friends, leave a comment, let me know if there's any bug myths, let me know if there's anything in this video that you thought was particularly stupid because there, there's a little bit here. All right, back to the video. Oh, look, see that wonderful pattern on a flower over there? Looks like an impressionist painting. And in a sense, it is. I That's love Picasso a Picasso bug. bug. I want to see one so bad. Also, this one is not, this is not a Picasso bug. This is another bug in the same family, the Scutellarids, which are the shield-backed bugs or sometimes called jewel bugs. This one is in the same group, but not the same species. These critters feed on plants and are mostly placid. But think twice if you want to take a closer look. It's not a ladybug. Not. When touched, it'll emit a strong odor that's not exactly flowery. Okay, yes, we're back to the many insects that aren't stink bugs also produce stinky chemicals. And also ladybugs do too. Ladybugs are also toxic. Don't eat ladybugs. I don't know why you would. Ladybugs produce their chemicals in a different way. They have this thing called reflex bleeding where they literally just ooze toxic blood out of their kneecaps. Pretty amazing. Asian giant hornets live mostly in Asian countries, but they were reported in North America in 2019. I have so many videos on Asian giant hornets, so you can like literally check the reference section below for all of them and I'll just have a few cycle in the cards up here. We're not going to talk about them again here because I've literally talked about them so very much. Lenomia is okay. a... This is important because Lenomia is actually a caterpillar, so the adult moth is fine. You can pick that up, but it's the caterpillar and that can actually kill you. Are you going to see one ever in your life? I mean, maybe not, probably not. They live in South America and normally what happens is people who are out in agricultural areas are like picking coffee or like picking bananas or picking whatever and don't realize that the caterpillar is there because they can camouflage pretty well and accidentally touch it if you go to the hospital you're gonna be fine uh but yes this is actually one of the dangerous ones but again it's the caterpillar and not the adults but before it becomes a moth it has to go through a caterpillar stage. Oh, wait, no, 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 and no, no. that's when... Okay, so this is, this is what the problem is. All right, so they're going to be like, the caterpillar is super, super dangerous, which it is, and then show a not correct species. This is a moth in the genus Automeris. In the United States, we have Automeris moths as well. Automeris is like the, the Io moth. We have a ton here in South America, and their caterpillars are big. They are spiky. And they are dangerous in the fact that if you touch them, it will hurt and you will get a rash, but it's not gonna send you to the hospital. So if they're gonna, if this video is going to tell you, like, be careful because there's this moth that can really hurt you and then show a video slash picture of the wrong one. Why? <laughs> okay. Lanomia caterpillars are covered no, in hair thin. No, 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 this again is an automeric moth. So let's look up a Lanomia. Lan Lenomia oblica is the most venomous one. It can be deadly. It can send people to the hospital. It's most common in Brazil. I have seen other Lenomia species here in Ecuador. The adults, I don't think I've come across the caterpillars. Any kind of caterpillar that's fluffy or spiny, please don't touch it. Please just be cognizant. A lot of times people are like, oh my God, I'm going to the jungle. I'm so worried about snakes. I'm so worried about jaguars. I'm so afraid of drinking the water. Me, as your tour guide, I'm most worried that you're going to slip and then put your hand on a tree and there's going to be a spiky venomous caterpillar that you didn't pay attention to. And a uh, so that's what I'm most worried about. Okay, here's a, a little thing to tell people to be careful of the Lenomia and how to recognize them. Oh my All God. No, centipedes no, 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 are no, terrifying. No, 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 no. Why? And perhaps one okay. of the most horrible. Okay, so what they're showing here were two examples of millipedes and one example of a centipede. Millipedes can also produce toxins, but they're not going to bite you and they're not going to hurt you. Centipedes can bite you. They have a modified pair of front legs that inject venom. I should do a whole video on the difference between millipedes and centipedes. Let me know in the comments if you would like that video. All centipedes are terrifying. And perhaps one of the most horrible species is a Texas red-headed centipede. Okay, it's not horrible. It's absolutely beautiful. When we change our language, please, por favor. 
First of all, it looks like it's ascended from your deepest, darkest nightmares. Yeah, those are antennae. So it has legs like that because it's a predator and needs to like grab onto substrate and hang out. And it's flattened because it can crawl under bark and it can crawl under logs and stuff like it and it's brightly colored to let you know not to touch it like that's the best thing about many of these insects and arthropods that are dangerous is they let you know they're so kind being pretty large these crawlers have a voracious appetite munching on toads lizards and an occasional rat sometimes when desperate they can even catch a bat right in the middle of a flight and a that's absolutely amazing. So this is in the genus Scolopendra. We are just starting to understand the venoms that are in the Scolopendra centipedes. And there's even a giant foot long centipede that lives in caves in Venezuela that also eats bats. So amazing. Velvet ants aren't ants at all. True. They're a kind of wingless wasp that just look a lot like ants. It's true. These bugs don't form large colonies and usually live alone, hiding in tall grass. This behavior has given them another nickname, cow ants, because when they're also called cow killers uh, in the states in like southern so southeastern United States. We have a big red one that's called cow killers, and it's uh, I mean they can't actually kill cows, but they hurt a lot. So humans also get bitten sometimes, Stung. especially if they walk barefoot. Velvet ants. I mean, literally, if you walk in tall grass with no shoes on, something's probably gonna get you. But their venom is less potent than that of bees, so it's not really dangerous. Okay, so there's multiple different species of velvet ants. Velvet ants are their own family, the family mutilids, and there are some that are basically not very painful at all, something akin to honeybees. There are some that are really painful and really high on the Justin Schmidt pain index scale that he wrote like there's one that's up there like a three three and a half something like that so there definitely are some species that are particularly painful are they dangerous are they gonna kill you no they're not are, is it gonna hurt a lot yeah probably <laughs> don't pick them up don't pick up the red shiny things if you want to squash this bug good luck they have an unusually tough carapace that protects them from other stinging insects and even birds okay so that is really cool actually many insects that are solitary and can deliver stings also have really hardened exoskeletons we find this in tarantula hawks we find this in velvet ants we also find this in bullet ants because your sting isn't gonna do sh if you're already digested and eaten so you need a really hard exoskeleton to be able to withstand something biting you or something some, something trying to swallow you to give you enough time to sting the roof of the mouth of whatever is trying to eat you or the hand if you're like a monkey and then escape. So it's really, really common to find solitary stinging insects with really hard exoskeletons so that way they can escape danger. So if you have something like bees or normal wasps that have tons and tons and tons of others, like each individual is very expendable. So like eh, it died, no big deal for the greater good. But if you're living by yourself and you die, that means you can't mate, you can't lay eggs, you can't find your prey, you can't find habitat for your in for your offspring. So yeah, you definitely need to make sure that your sting gets to where it's going before you get eaten. All right, my beautiful love bugs. Hopefully you did not cry all your makeup off. Hopefully you ha still have some hair from like ripping your hair out. I hope that you liked today's react video. If you have anything that you want me to react to, please also let me know in the comments or you can DM me and all of those things. So you should definitely click up here for more commentary react videos. You can click down here for some entomologist explains video and i will be with you very soon in another turf wars i had to ask permission from the park that i want to film in to it's been a, it's been what we call tramite <laughs> it's been a process <laughs> so as soon as i can get into the park and film i you'll see that video all right thank you so much for hanging out with me i will see you love bugs very soon bye